Brilliance Audio presents the unabridged recording of Volume 5, We Can Remember It For You Wholesale by Philip K. Dick Performed by David DeVries and Joyce Bean How does one fashion a book of resistance? A book of truth in an empire of falsehood? Or a book of rectitude in an empire of vicious lies? How does one do this right in front of the enemy? Not through the old-fashioned ways of writing while you're in the bathroom, but how does one do that in a truly future technological state? Is it possible for freedom and independence to arise in new ways under new conditions? That is, will new tyrannies abolish these protests? Or will there be new responses by the spirit that we can't anticipate? Philip K. Dick, in an interview, 1974 from Only Apparently Real. Introduction by Thomas M. Dish The conventional wisdom has it that there are writers' writers and readers' writers. The latter are those happy few whose books, by some pheromonic chemistry, the former can never quite duplicate in their own laboratories, appear year after year on the bestseller lists. They may, or more usually, may not satisfy the upmarket tastes of literary critics, but their books sell. Writers' writers get great reviews, especially from their admiring colleagues, but their books don't attract readers who can recognize, even at the distance of a review, the signs of a book by a writer's writer. The prose style comes in for high praise. A true reader's writer, by contrast, would not want to be accused of anything so elitist as style. The characters have depth. Above all, such a book is serious. Many writers' writers aspire to the wider fame and higher advances of readers' writers, and occasionally a readers' writer will covet such laurels as royalties cannot buy. Henry James, the writers' writer par excellence, wrote one of his drollest tales, The Next Time, about just such a pair of cross-purposed writers, and James's conclusion is entirely true to life. The literary writer does his best to write a blockbuster, and it wins him more laurels, but no more readers. The successful hack does her damnedest to produce a work of art, the critics sneer, but it is her greatest commercial success. Philip K. Dick was, in his time, both a writer's writer and a reader's writer, and neither, and another kind altogether, a science fiction writer's science fiction writer. The proof of the last contention is to be found blazoned on the covers of a multitude of his paperback books, where his colleagues have vied to lavish superlatives on him. Sample complete. Ready to continue?